Hello aviators, welcome back to the Finer Points. You guys might have heard me picking on this quote teardrop entry into the traffic pattern at non-towered airports. And I am, all right? We shouldn't be flying some arbitrary shape and I'll tell you why, again. It's primarily because people have a very difficult time determining where they actually are over the earth. Pilots have a tendency to look out the forward window and say, I'm over the thing I can see. When in reality, you know, with slant range, you might be two or three miles away from that location. To know exactly where you are, you have to look straight down. And even then, it's hard for a pilot to put the airplane where they want it to be. Recently, I was flying pattern work at Marysville Airport, okay? And when I was on the runway, uh, about to apply power for the touch and go, I hear an aircraft report that they are two or three miles out on a 45. Okay, when you say you're on a 45 to enter a downwind, presumably you're going to impact that downwind somewhere around midfield. Okay, that's the way it's supposed to work. So the picture I painted in my mind was that this aircraft was going to enter the pattern somewhere around midfield. Let's listen to that call exactly as I heard it. Cessna 2173 Zulu is going to be three miles to the southeast entering on LF 45 for runway 14 Marysville. Okay, so then I continue and now here I am on the upwind and I'm waiting to hear that this aircraft has entered the downwind because if they were on a 45 to enter the downwind at midfield and I turn crosswind when they get there, the spacing should work out just fine. So eventually, I heard that call. Now imagine how surprised I was to get a traffic alert, and you can even see me here looking out to the left. I'm trying to find that aircraft somewhere on the downwind, but the traffic alert came and the aircraft was at my one o'clock, okay? They were not even yet on the downwind, and there was a collision hazard here, okay? Uh, that looked something like this. Marysville traffic, Skyhawk 172, Foxtrot Kilo, left crosswind 14, Marysville. Okay, we're going to look for that airplane entering the downwind. We're going to keep our turn coming traffic, around here. Traffic, 1 o'clock, high, less than 1 mile. Okay, and I'm not going to beat that airplane up. I just use them as an example of how folks don't really know where they are. They reported on the downwind before they were even in the vicinity of the airport. Okay, they were still outside my crosswind turn when they reported on the downwind. So it makes you wonder, what was that 45 call, right? Where were they when they said they were on a 45 to enter that downwind? And they're not the only ones, all right? Recently, I was at Lincoln Airport and some person, I'm not going to throw out any end numbers, but they said they were going to make that famous teardrop maneuver, whatever that is, right? Some arbitrary shape, some teardrop. There's about three different versions of teardrops out there that people think they are correct in executing. But what actually happens in reality is something more like this. Look at this ground track, okay? You can see that this pilot did not cross midfield, that this pilot did fly some arbitrary shape called a teardrop, but by the time they rejoined the pattern, they did it right here at the beam position, okay? This is pretty common. I mean, this goes all the way back. In the year 2000, for example, there was a mid-air collision near Waukegan Airport exactly because the pilot reported that he was over a certain point when in fact, he was east of that point and just looking out the forward window. You can see that right here on the transcript. So it is difficult to know exactly what you're over. This is an art. This is part of what we learn as we become better and better aviators. Back to the teardrop, the FAA has never Got that? Has never. Not in any publication. Not in an old publication. Not in a new publication. Not in the PHAC, the AFH, or any advisory circular. They have never recommended something called a teardrop. The options are essentially either you're going to overfly the traffic pattern above traffic pattern altitude and then maneuver out to the pattern side, descend and come in on a straight 45 degree leg that intersects the downwind at the midfield point, or you're going to come from the non-pattern side, from the dead side, at TPA, fly directly across the middle of the runway and turn into the downwind as traffic allows. As we look at this first one where we're meant to overfly the traffic pattern altitude, I am going to disagree with the FAA on the point of being 500 feet above the pattern. All right, even in the AC where they lay this out, they say that turbine aircraft and large aircraft are found 500 feet above the pattern, so, if we're not, if we're trying not to hit other airplanes, let's make that a thousand. Okay, so can we just switch that to a thousand feet above pattern altitude and do what I call a reconnaissance mission? You know, look at the wind indicators, look at the condition of the runway, identify aircraft in the pattern. You can circle up there. You're a thousand feet above the pattern. Uh, identify the emergency landing sites for your inevitable takeoff. All of that is fine. Just when it's time to enter the 45, you basically leave the area 
turn around and come in on a 45. There is no arbitrary teardrop shape. By far the most common error is not going far enough away from the pattern when you do this maneuver. Um, I can tell you from teaching for two decades, the thing I always have to tell students is, no, no, keep flying, nope, you're still too close, keep going, you have to maneuver away from the traffic pattern. Basically leave the area, descend, and then enter on a 45. In our CFI club meetings, which we do just about every other month, we had one CFI say that what he does is pre-identify points on the ground where he's going to make radio calls. For example, he might say, when I'm over these railroad tracks, I'll report inbound on the 45. And what that does is it fixes a point on the ground, a known reference, so he knows exactly how far away he is from the traffic pattern, it reminds him to tie it together with a radio call and make sure that he put the airplane where, where he wanted it to be. I know that everybody who tries to put it where they want it to be, but that's the point of this video. It's not as easy as it looks. All right, aviators, that's all for this episode of The Finer Points. Hopefully you got something out of that video and hopefully we do not have to repeat this uh, topic again. Please leave a comment below if there's something you'd like to say or a video you'd like to see. Remember, we do have a free trial of the Ground School app. We've now got four courses for one price, unlimited access. Uh, you can do mock orals with me if you've got a flight review coming up or a check ride coming up. Uh, but no matter what you do in there, I promise you'll find content that improves your flying game and makes you feel safer and more confident. I'm Jason Miller. Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that little alert bell so you get notified of uploads. But most importantly, until I see you again, be safe and fly your best.